Good afternoon, and uh, welcome to worship today as we uh, have our second uh, Wednesday in Lent here. So uh, let's stand up and greet those folks around us as we prepare for worship today. We'll be following the order of Vespers. Uh, there aren't any slides, so please pick up a bulletin if you didn't, or of course you can follow along in your hymn book. So please write for opening versicles. Arise as you're able. O Lord, open my lips. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Praise to you, O Christ, Lamb of our salvation. Please be seated for our first song. First reading is from Romans chapter 8. And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good, for those who are called according to his purpose. For those whom he first foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, in order that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. And those whom he predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. Please rise as you're able for the Holy Gospel. Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the sixth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Therefore I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor the body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns. 
and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And which of you, by being anxious, can add a single hour to his span of life? Why are you anxious about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, they neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is alive and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Therefore do not be anxious, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the Gentiles seek after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them all. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We'll continue with our Lenten response. Deliver me, O Lord my God, for you are the God of my salvation. Rescue me from my enemies. Protect me from those who rise against me. In you, O Lord, do I put my trust. Leave me not, O Lord my God. Rescue me from my enemies. Protect me from those who rise against me. Deliver me, O Lord, my God, for you are the God of my salvation. Rescue me from my enemies. Protect me from those who rise against me. Please be seated. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God, our Father, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, my God. Amen. Um, our reading uh, is, uh, is the Matthew reading from chapter 6. If you want to follow along in your pew Bible, it's uh, page um, um, 685, 685 here in your pew Bible. Again, we're uh, going through this Lenten season, uh, talking about return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, from Joel chapter 2. So our, it's the, kind of the theme of this, of where we're talking about prayer and fasting, and uh, I really liked the hymn that we just sang um, right before our readings. Uh, let's see. No. Yes. Sorry, my brain's not working. Um, how uh, we talked about, was that? No. Anyway, sorry, my brain is all screwed up here. So, no. The, the, the hymn we sang and um, just how it talked about, of course, uh, um, Jesus in the wilderness for 40 days and for fasting and what. And I'm also thinking of a couple other devotions that I was looking at today. So, but, so on Sundays, you know, and Wednesdays, we're looking at fair prayer and fasting. Today, on Wednesdays, we're kind of working through the Lord's prayers. We talk about prayer uh, and fasting, but just kind of, remember, we look at the Lord's prayer as a model prayer. It's one you use. Uh, you pray it in its own right, and it's a, it's a beautiful prayer that Jesus taught his disciples and taught us. But it's also a, a model of prayer in which you use the petitions to put in your own words to pray what is specifically on your heart and soul and mind. Okay, so today we're going to look at the second and third petitions. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. You know, from a linguistic point of view, I often think it's so interesting to me because um, the wording that has, has kind of been fixed and memorized and set, and it's, it is perfectly acceptable that we've done this that we use a King James English for that Bible, for the Lord's Prayer, okay? Now, I, as I say that, I'm reminded, too, that Martin Luther said that it's so important that you, that you basically find a translation and you stick with it. You don't, you know, keep changing around the wording of the creeds and the Lord's Prayer and, and all of this stuff, because he said that just confuses people. So you just pick with a translation and you stick with it. Well, of all the Christian material and the Christian uh, um, uh, things that we profess and we pray and we confess, the Lord's Prayer continues to be in, in King James. And you know what? It's perfectly fine, okay? I, do, I have met some Lutherans over the years who have, have prayed in the kind of more modern English, you know? Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, your kingdom come. And, uh, um, and that's perfectly acceptable too. In fact, if we start, I, I say this more of just because I'm fascinated with languages of this, to kind of pointing this out, but I would never tell you that you need to start changing it and saying it differently, praying it differently, because once you start praying it differently, you're going you're gonna to think so much about the differences that you're no longer going to be thinking about the, what you're actually praying for, okay? 
I'm just pointing this out again. I'm not saying, you know, go and do it differently. Um, but it's just, it's just interesting, okay? But thy kingdom come, or your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, okay? Uh, looking at that first part, the kingdom of God coming, Luther's catechism explains it. The kingdom of God certainly comes by itself without our prayers, but we pray in this petition that it may come to us also. We know that God created the world and all of us and all creation, and he did not consult any human beings before he started creating. He didn't look to me and say, Chris, what do you think? Should I put this kind of weirdo tree here? Or should I make this pine tree? And No, because God created everything outside of us. He didn't, he didn't come to us. He didn't look to humanity to say, well, I hope they can dictate my life and tell me how, to, how I should live and move and have my being. Wait a minute. People do that already all the time. They don't need God to ask them. But is that how it works? I mean, is that how we see in Scripture? Uh, God spoke, and there was light. The light shined in the darkness. The darkness has not understood it. God separated the light from the darkness. God created animals and, and birds and the fish and the air and everything. I love, I love children's books and how they, just, you know, they picture creation because it's often really good, okay? Sometimes children's Bible story books are a little, it's just a little odd, but, but I love how they do creation because it's just, they often have good, beautiful pictures of you know, the creation that God created, the fish of the sea and the, and the animals. And my, my daughter has several Noah Arcs books. I'm not really sure why, okay? Don't, don't ask me why. We did not tell people that my daughter Noah's Ark book if we didn't, okay? But it just seems like first couple of years, given her Noah Ark's books, I don't know. Anyway, and somebody gave her a stuffed animal of a Noah. It, anyway, it's weird because I'm like, no. Anyway, don't get her any of those, okay, by the way. Okay, I'm just telling you, okay? If somebody's like, oh, I just have a, you know what? Anyway. But the creation is beautiful because God created it outside of us. He gave us beautiful sunshine today, and it's warm. It's like, wow, this is gorgeous. And, he, you know, and I didn't do anything. None of us did anything to make it happen, okay? The weatherman has studied meteorology, and he can tell us when we're going to have a storm and when there's going to be snow, and, you know. And, but, he, you know, weatherman is not God, okay? He's just basing it on what they see in clouds and sky and all this good stuff because he studied that, and he knows all that stuff, Okay. But the weatherman, it doesn't dictate the weather, all right? Uh, the president of the United States doesn't, doesn't make, oh, sure, he can use his power, but he can't make things happen that don't. He, he wants Russia to stop fighting in Ukraine, but, but he, what is he going to do? Twist somebody's arm? You better do it because I am. You know, and, and that's exactly kind of the situation where, you know, sometimes we can act like we're God and think, you know, well, it's, it's, you know, I'm the one who can do it, okay? God's kingdom comes without our doing, okay? Because, you know, because if it was the other way around, if you were trying to be God or you influenced God, like how would you influence God? What would you tell him? I know some people like pray for world peace, and that's, that's a noble thing to pray for, Okay. Maybe, maybe, though, there needs to be, you know, not peace in some place of the world for whatever reason. God only knows, okay? But God's kingdom comes in spite of us, and, and, and God's kingdom comes irrespective of whatever we've done, right? God's kingdom comes irrespective of how we are. Are we good enough? And to whose standards were, are we, you know, defining that good enough or not good enough, whatever that means? Okay, or what, what standards are we using here? So how does the kingdom come? God's kingdom comes when our heavenly father gives us his spirit so that by his grace, we believe his holy word and lead God to the lives here in time and there in eternity. God's kingdom comes when his spirit teaches us and creates in us faith to nurture that faith so that we believe in the one true God and that we then live the way that God asks us to live. Well, how does he want us to live? To love God above all else and to love our neighbors as ourselves. Jesus says in Mark, he, you know, after John was arrested, Jesus came into Galilee proclaiming the gospel of God. And Jesus said, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe the gospel. The time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God is at hand because Jesus is there. He's walking on the world, on the planet. 
repent and believe in the gospel. You know, the spirit teaches us this truth. Well, what's he teaching us? He, the, the, the whole, you know, one of the main jobs of the spirit is to teach this truth to us and remind us. Okay. Remind us of what Jesus has done for us. Remind us uh, of a, a nugget of truth. Think about this just yesterday when I went to go pick up a, a Walmart order and, and I, uh, the, I was, I saw one of the workers come out who delivered. I've seen him before never several times. We've talked off and on and, and uh, I don't remember what his name is because, you know, I can't remember anybody's name, but, and, but I remember his face and we talked. I remember some things about him and uh, I gave him a cocoa pack because I've been making these cocoa packs. I told you some with, I put a Bible verse on it, whatever. And anyway, I gave him a cocoa packet and uh, I was thinking like, I said, you know, you, you said you don't like coffee, but I, I wondered if you like cocoa. And he said, yeah, he does. And um, anyway, and so like for me, this was a moment where it was like, you know, I'm just being a customer from Walmart. And I am engaging with this man who I've engaged with several times. Because I saw some other workers come out. I thought, oh, that one guy comes. I'd really like to talk to him, okay? I just, you know, I visited with him before. He remembered my name, which I thought, I mean, he has a, you know, he's got his little phone there to show that. But he, rem he remembered my face. And uh, anyway, and so I thought, you know, this is it. But this is a moment right here. This is it. Where God's kingdom is, is right here, okay? I don't know the man's faith, but I know that God created him in his image and his likeness as he made me that same way. And that we have been, uh, that Jesus died for this man and for me. And, uh, uh, and that the kingdom of God is, is you know, is, uh, Jesus has come right here, okay? It's, you know, it was just an afternoon. It was yesterday afternoon. No, it's just a day in the parking lot right there. It wasn't anything spectacular. Jesus gives us the spirit so that we believe and he creates that, nurtures that faith in us and grows so that we can then share that faith so that I can share that nugget of truth with this man. Whatever nugget of truth the spirit, you know, prompts me to share with him, which is, you know, also the spirit's work and his job. Jesus then, you know, of course, he's also talking about, again, we were this reading we just had from Matthew, which is our, our, uh, the one here I was going to point out here. Matthew 6, a verse, uh, first verse and the last verse. Therefore, I tell you, Matthew 6, 25. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more important than food and the body more important than clothes? And then the last verse, 33 and 34. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. So I know you've heard that one before, okay? Jesus is telling us to not worry. Why? Why should we not worry? Well, he says basically because he's got everything under control, okay? The reason we worry is because we're not God. And so we want to be God sometimes, and we want to be able to, you know, I'm the one in charge, do, 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 tell you what to do, shake your finger, and all of that good stuff. Do not be anxious about anything, anything, okay? What you eat, drink, what you wear. Is not life more important than food and the body more important than clothes? Verse 3, and so this is what Jesus says. Seek first the kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. This should be, that last verse, there should be a reminder of why you shouldn't worry about, you shouldn't, why you shouldn't fret about stuff. You're like, well, today I'm, I'm kind of frustrated or worried about something. Okay, that's okay. But you know what? Just leave it in God's hands. Just put it at his feet, Jesus' feet. Here, Jesus, take my worries. Because tomorrow I'm going to wake up and, whoa, dang it, there's more problems. Put those at Jesus' feet here. Okay, wake up the next day. Dang it, another day, there's problems right here. Every day, there's problems. But seek first the kingdom and his righteousness. Look to God. Seek his kingdom. Well, we know that God's kingdom has come because Jesus says where two or three are gathered in his name. Okay? I'm not going to count because I don't, I don't count well and fast, but you can see how many people we have here today. Okay? Looks like there's more than two and three. Okay? It also includes the pastor because I'm a person and I'm a child of God, okay, just like you are. So one, okay, it looks like there's more than two. Looks like there's more than three here. So, so, Jesus, okay, we don't celebrate communion on Wednesdays, but, okay, every Sunday, 
Jesus gives us that opportunity. But even when we don't have the body and blood of Christ, Jesus still says, he doesn't say two or three are gathered and it better have communion and you better have your butt in the pew. Is that what he said? No. His kingdom comes irrespective of what we do. We simply receive this. We simply, I was thinking about this as I was, you know, I was, I, we finished up lunch and my, my wife and daughter stayed home and, uh, um, and I was coming. And of course, you know, here in this part of Des Plaines, you know, there's people living their life, going about delivery, truck, and all this stuff, and just everything. Life's happened, all this stuff. And I thought, I'm heading off to, I'm heading off to church, and we're going to have worship, and some other people are going to come, and we're going to gather in God's house. And I don't know, there was just something kind of you know, exciting about that. You know, and then it's like, I want more people to know about this. Now, I didn't have opportunity uh, you know, to stop and share what I was doing because actually there were green lights all the way. So that was like helpful. But I mean, you know, there's, the, but, but there's opportunities. God puts other opportunities in our life. It's not just necessarily when you're in your car, okay? So the kingdom of God is, comes and your will is done on earth as it is in heaven. Well, what is the good and the good and gracious will of God is done even without our prayer, but we pray that it may be done among us also. Thankfully, that God's will is done irrespective of what, what we do or what we pray. But God wants us to pray. He wants to communicate with us. He wants to engage with us. God's will is done when he breaks and hinders the evil plan and purpose of the devil, the world, and our sinful nature, which do not want us to hollow God's name or let his kingdom come. And when he strengthens and keeps us firm in his word and faith until we die, this is his good and gracious will. Because I know I've heard this. I hear this sometimes on, you know, some of these Christian radio stations in the area. And, and it's a valid question. But, you know, some people on the radio say, well, you know, well, what's God's will for my life? What's, what's God's will for my life? Well, to seek him with your whole heart and to, to love him and to, to, to love your neighbors yourself. I mean... We, we like to make it difficult because we assume, you know, it's like, well, first of all, there'll be a 97 point step to get to wherever you're going to go. And you better start with one. It's going to be mind breaking. You're going to hate it. So you're really not going to get through all 97 points. So you better quit now. Like, fortunately, God doesn't say that. Okay. Seek first the kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. Okay. God's will is done when he breaks and hinders the evil plans of the devil, the world, our, world and our sinful nature. But he strengthens us and keeps us firm in his word and faith until we die so that we can be a witness to those around us who want to know what God's will is or does God exist or what's God's kingdom or whatever. What's right here? Christ has said, two or three are gathered in my name. I'm here among you. That's it. And I think that's what's kind of frustrating for some people because I think just like when the commander, uh, the, um, the Syrian commander comes to um, Elijah, Elijah, he's got a Naaman, Naaman, remember Naaman? He had, he had, he had leprosy, unfortunately. And uh, um, so a slave girl in Naaman's household says, oh, you should go to the prophet Elijah. He'll heal you. He gets to Elijah and he comes to Elijah and Elijah you know, God already told him, hey, uh, name and the commander's coming, and he's going to do this and this and say this and this. Okay. So Elijah knows what's happening. And so, the, you know, knocks on his door, and I want to see the prophet Elijah. And the prophet Elijah is busy reading a book and drinking a cup of tea in the back room, and he doesn't have time to go wait on customers who are knocking on the front door. And so he just sends his, uh, sends his servant, Gehazi, and uh, goes out. Gazi tells him, go dunk yourself seven times in the Jordan River. And um, Naaman's upset. Why didn't, why didn't Elijah come out and make a big spectacle? Fireworks and wave in a wand and do some idiotic stuff and make, a, make it all terrible. You know? And God can do that. Sure. But he didn't. And then uh, one of Naaman's, you know, underlings that are helping Naaman, and it's like, well, you know what? If he told you to do this and this, and, you know, why don't, why don't you just do it? Why don't you just do it, Naaman? Just go dunk yourself seven times, because it's like you've had all these other medical treatments, and they didn't work. 
Uh, just go see what happens. So finally, Naaman begrudgingly goes down to the river and he dunks himself seven times, you know. And, and then, you know, and he's healed. It's God's word, that's how God works, okay? And so that's an example where I think some people today, they get frustrated because they want that same thing. They, they, want, they have Naaman's reaction. They want something spectacular when we talk about Jesus. And there's not a, a big fireworks display and maybe a magic wand or whatever. And not everybody wants that, but I feel like some people do. I think they want that. They want some sort of big, and, and God better speak to me from the cloud, and he better... Now, now you're making a list of demands of how you want God to respond and speak to you? It's like uh, one of the readings I was reading this morning in Job about, you know, how Job was saying that, you know, how, uh, you know, God is the creator, and, but, you know, is he, is he also one who, who needs man's help? It's not exactly what he said, but that's kind of a sentiment. And, you know, and since, when, since when does God, what, what do you have to offer to God anyway? Or who are you? Who is anybody on the planet that they think that they know best and so they need God to do a certain way? It's true that God can, can, God can do anything he wants, okay? But for someone to say, well, I need God to, if God's real, real, then he needs to do this and he needs to do this and he needs to heal this person. And got a big long list there of things that you need your God to do. Okay, but... But is God a vending machine? Like, is that, that's part of the problem, is God's not a vending machine. No amount of quarters is going to put that in there and make God do what you want him to do. Because God operates the way he knows best, just like a father knows best for his kid. Even though my kid doesn't like it, I mean, you know, I'm teaching her. Sometimes I discipline her, and just as you disciplined your kids, because your kids need direction and discipline and guidance they need to, you know, move them along. God, he wants, he wants to be with us, though. He wants us to learn from him and grow from him and know. That's why he wants us to pray to him and seek his face always. We pray and it's like talking to God. It's talking like you're talking to your best friend. I don't know if that's how you pray, but I know that's definitely how I pray. In my own personal, I mean, I talk to God. He's my best friend. I just talk to him. Because I think if this God that I worship, if he's not, if I can't talk to him like my best friend, if I have to do some weirdo thing and do some whatever, whatever it is, some weirdo thing, okay, just keep it at that, then forget it, okay? I don't have to spend my life doing weirdo things to communicate with my God. I just want to talk to him like I talk to my best friend. And it's great because then this, this, my God is just, he's... He's going to talk back to me and he's going to share. Can we communicate, communicate, communicate with me? Let me know. He's going to use his word, his spirit. It's going to direct and guide my thoughts and attitudes. He's going to direct and guide other people to lead and guide them to maybe communicate with me in some way. God's used a lot of ways because that's, that's what he has. He has his word. It's right here. You know, all you have to do, you know what you have to do with it. Not throw it in the corner. And, and grow in the grace of knowledge of what, what God's done for us. And we know that for all those who love God, all things work together for good. For those who are called according to God's purpose. For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, in order that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. And those God, those whom God predestined, he also called. Those whom he called, he justified. Those whom he justified, he also glorified. And that, that's, that's, that's the, what it is. That's happy for me because that's being in God's presence. That's, that's having a father in heaven who loves me. We know that for those who love God, all things work together for good. Now, that doesn't mean a happy ending every time. You know that. Sometimes the good that God has for us, maybe we look at it and say it's not good but it's still good in God's eyes. I just was thinking of this the other day when I remember uh, someone, I was talking with someone and they said something about, well, you know, um, their whatever family member was struggling with some health issue or whatever. And I, and I don't know, I don't remember the details, but I just remember thinking, and I didn't say it at the time because I didn't think of it until afterwards, 
that it's possible that God allowed the one sickness, the person happened to have the one sickness, because uh, instead of allowing a greater awful thing to happen to the person, okay? Sometimes God protects us from something. He might have lied up something, you know, maybe you have some sickness, but he has protected you or something, okay? Not always, but that, that, is, that is the case sometimes, that sometimes God will allow, he'll allow you to. Sometimes he allows me to be sick for a reason. Yeah, I mean, I'm not the best sick person, so bear with me, okay? But maybe you're not the best sick person either. I don't know. Uh, but God, God is, you know, he's allowed me to be sick for a reason. He's granted me health for a reason, for heaven's sakes. We never talk about that. When I walk around and say, why the heck am I so healthy today? And that God, why didn't God make me healthy? Or when we have a good day, nobody ever says that. Or, why the heck do we have a good sunny day today out here? Why did God give me a good day today? I'll stomp around and be all grumpy because of that. <laughs> it's true, though, right? Because we really love to talk about how awful things are happening. And why do you got to allow those bad things to happen? I don't know why, but I know that for those whom God, uh, um, for the, those who love God, all things work together for God's good and for those who are called according to his purpose. Because it's always good for God in God's eyes. And our response needs to be, you know, that, well, pray that your response is Jesus' response. God, help me to respond the way your son responds so that my desire will be your desire. My thoughts will be your thoughts. My ways will be your ways. That we'll, we'll, we'll be on the same wave pan. So when you desire something, I will react the same way. When you speak a certain word, I want to speak the same word. I want your desire to be my desire, your thoughts to be my thoughts. If I'm sick, I want you, your thoughts to be my, my, your response to be my response. Does that make sense? That's the prayer to pray. Your kingdom come, your will is done on earth as it is in heaven, because God's will is done always. Irrespective of what we do, but we still pray and we know that God's word, God works through his word and the spirit to teach us and guide us and, and move us along and encourage us so that we can then be a blessing to those around us. As we move through this season of Lent, this season in which we're talking about fasting and praying and seeking the Lord our God, returning to Lord our, the Lord our God. For God is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. To God be the glory now and forever. Amen. Now the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and your minds, found in the one true faith of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's continue by singing our next hymn.
Congregation, please rise as you're able. Let us continue with the Kyrie. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever, amen. O Lord, hear my prayer. And let us pray. O God, from whom come all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works, give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments, and also that we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may live in peace and quietness. Through Jesus Christ, our Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now receive the benediction of our Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. Please be seated for our final hymn. Good afternoon again. Um, I don't have any announcements unless anybody else has any, and uh, I hope you can join us for refreshments. We have a lot of goodies there, so um, 
Go in peace and serve the Lord.